Good morning to all. Welcome back to our course on the C programming language. In today's session, I'm going to discuss about a concept on dangling pointers. So here I'll be discussing about what a dangling pointer is and we'll see some of the scenarios where we'll come across these dangling pointers. So I'll be discussing about three different scenarios, how we come across these dangling pointers and uh, what happens if we don't concentrate on these dangling pointers. That means uh, what is the effect of these dangling pointers? This is what we are going to discuss. Coming to the point of uh, what these dangling pointers are, we know that a pointer is a variable which stores the address of another variable. And during my last sessions, I clearly told that it is very important that you should always assign a valid address to a pointer. So if you could not initialize the pointer with a valid address, then such type of pointers are called as dangling pointers. So a dangling pointer is a pointer which is pointing to nothing. We can say like this. So always remember that when you are dealing with the concept of pointers, you should initialize the pointer with a valid address. And if you forget or if you don't give a valid uh, address initialization to the pointer, then it will lead to a concept which is called as dangling pointer. So we can say that this is an uninitialized pointer. Uninitialized pointer. So this point we can easily remember. So whenever you come across the concept of dangling pointer, you can simply say that it is an uninitialized pointer. Or we can say that it is a pointer which is pointing to nothing. Or we can say that a pointer which is pointing to a memory which is already deallocated. Like that we have so many definitions we can give for the dangling pointers. But just remember the concept that it is an uninitialized pointer. And the other name for this dangling pointer is wild pointer. So when you come across the term wild pointer, it is nothing but a dangling pointer. So this is all about the introduction part. We have seen what a dangling pointer is and what are the other names we have for this dangling pointer like the uninitialized pointer or the wild pointer. Now let us see three different scenarios where we will come across this particular dangling pointer. So the first scenario is when a pointer is pointing to, when a pointer is pointing to already freed memory. then we will end up in a pointer which is called as the dangling pointer. Let us explain this clearly. I will explain this with a programming example also, but before explaining this scenario, we know that we can allocate the memory for different variables in C using two different techniques. One is the static memory allocation and the second method is the dynamic memory allocation. And in the dynamic memory allocation, we know that the programmer has to take every responsibility of allocating and deallocating the memory. And we know that the deallocation of memory 
will be done by making use of the predefined functions like malloc, calloc, and realloc. And we can deallocate the memory, which is dynamically allocated by using a function called as the free. So the first scenario is a pointer is pointing to already freed memory. So we'll be allocating as the first step, we'll allocate the memory using this malloc and rcalloc function. And then we will free this memory, but we forget to initialize that pointer which it is pointing to the dynamic memory, allocated memory. We will forget and then that remains as it as a dangling memory. So I will show it with a simple programming example. Then we will try to understand this concept. So I didn't give my hash include. I just start my program with the main function. And let me take an integer pointer PTR. Now I want to initialize for one uh, integer value to this pointer. So I make use of the malloc function. I know that the malloc function accepts only one parameter. Of course, it may take two parameters, but here I'm just taking um, only one integer initialization, right? And the return type of the malloc function is a wide pointer, and you can change that wide pointer to any data type. I would like to change here as int star. So malloc function, after successfully allocating the memory for one integer, let us take the scenario that integer occupies four bytes of memory. Or uh, let me take it as uh, five comma size of int. So five into four, therefore total memory that is allocated will be 20 bytes. So after successfully allocating the 20 bytes of memory by this malloc function, it is going to return the base address of successfully allocated memory. The starting address will be returned. And when you return an address, there should be some pointer to catch hold of that address. And since I have typecasted the wild star to int star, I should make use of the integer pointer on the left hand side of the statement. So at this point, the dynamic memory allocation will happen and let me say it diagrammatically. So these are my 20 bytes of memory, let us assume it, which is allocated dynamically by the malloc function and let us assume that the base address is 100. And this base address after successful allocation, it will return and store that base address inside the PTR. Let me take the PTR value that the address of the PTR is 50, base address. So uh, the malloc function will be storing the base address of 100 inside this PTR. Therefore, there exists a pointer from PTR to this 20 bytes of memory. This is what happens up to this uh, first two statements. Now let us say there exists some code and finally what I have done here is I have written the free PTR. So I want to free the memory, I want to deallocate the memory that is allocated here. When the compiler executes this particular statements free of PTR, what happens here is the memory that is allocated by this malloc function will be deallocated. So here the memory will be deallocated. 
so here this will be erased and this link will be broken when you observe this particular situation initially you have in allocated 20 bytes of memory and you have stored the base address of this 20 bytes inside this ptr pointer and after the last statement is executed free of ptr the memory allocated by the mlloc function will be freed because of its functionality and if you observe the position or the situation of this ptr you can see that ptr is not initialized to a valid address PTR is an uninitialized pointer. Therefore, at this scenario or at this position, PTR becomes a dangling pointer. So this is end of uh, the program. That's why there, there's nothing to worry about this uh, dangling pointer. But when you want to make use of this ptr or when you have some other lines in the code how can we convert this dangling pointer into a valid pointer means we know that dangling pointer is an uninitialized pointer and previous sessions in the previous sessions i told that when there is no valid address to be assigned to a pointer there exists a special value which is called as null you can assign that special value to any pointer right so i can write a program uh, statement like this ptr is equal to null now the ptr becomes the null pointer a null pointer is a pointer which stores the a special value which is called as null inside it so when you write this statement ptr is equal to null i am initializing the ptr value with null a special value therefore this becomes a null pointer but not the dangling pointer so this is how you are going to convert a dangling pointer into a null pointer so in the above code we have created a pointer ptr and we have allocated a, a some memory to this mlloc by using the mlloc function and after some lines of code, I have freed this particular pointer. When I use this function, the memory will be deallocated and the PTR remains uninitialized. Therefore, it is pointing to nothing. This situation is very dangerous and therefore you have to avoid such situations. So instead of leaving this PTR like that, you can assign it to a special value which is called as null value therefore the ptr instead of dangling pointer it becomes a null pointer so that is the first scenario we have explained here where a pointer is pointing to a already freed memory that is one scenario where the dangling pointers can rise let me explain the second scenario where we can see this dangling pointer. So this is a situation where a variable goes out of scope. In the previous sessions, we have seen under the concept, uh, we have seen uh, the points like the scope, lifetime, initial value, default value, all those things we have seen. So a scope is the region of the program over which we can access the value of that variable. So different variables have different scope. For example, if you take a local variable, it is having a scope within that block only. And similarly, if you take the global variable, you can access the global variable throughout the program. So the scope of the global variable is throughout the program. So any variable you take, it will have a scope. A scope specifies the region over which you can access the value of that particular variable. 
So by taking this particular scenario, I would like to write a simple program which explains how a pointer is going to be converted into a dangling pointer. All these things are the common mistakes that are done inside a programming part. So a programmer does not do it intentionally, but there are some uh, mistakes that the programmers will do unwantedly and it will result in ending up in the dangling pointers. So these are some common errors. We can say that dangling pointers can be called as common errors. What that happens in the programming part. Now I'll explain the concept of variable going out of scope and how it becomes a dangling pointer. All these things I will explain in the program. I start my program with the main function. Let me take a pointer, integer pointer, int star ptr. Okay. Now I would like to start one more scope or the block. And here what I will do is I take a variable integer x and I'm initializing it with a value of some 4, 8, 6. Now here what I will do is ptr is equal to address of x. I have written like this and I end this particular block here. So at this point, this, since this is a declaration statement, memory will be allocated for the PTR. Let us assume that the base address is 100 and we have not initialized it. Right. So here also it is something like a dangling pointer and at this point we have a variable called x and 486 is the value that is initialized to it. Let me take the base address of x as 200. And in the third statement, PTR is equal to address of x. I store the address of x that is 200 in PTR. Therefore, I just make a pointer like this. Now, let us see the situation here. Now I would like to print the value of printf. I would like to print the value of the x with the help of the pointer. So I write like this. I end it. Now you can see that the scope of the variable x is within this block. It starts at this point where it has been declared or initialized and its scope lies within that block only. When the control comes out of this particular position, so at this block, at this point, x remains dead. Therefore, when the control comes out of this uh, closed curly brace, x will be deallocated automatically by the compiler since it is a static allocation. So uh, automatically the allocation, the memory allocation for x will be taken back by the compiler. Now if you try to print the value of the x using this uh, dereferencing of the pointer, star ptr is nothing but dereferencing of the pointer. You can see here that the pointer is pointing to a location which is out of scope, which it is pointing to a variable which is already dead, which is already deallocated. So such type of pointers, therefore at this particular situation from here, from here to here, the pointer becomes dangling pointer. So this is the second scenario which I have explained when the variable goes out of scope then it will convert the pointer into a dangling pointer. This is another scenario. Now I would like to explain the last scenario. 
where we can come across this dangling pointer. This is during function calls. So the same concept, during function calls, the variables that are present inside the function will be dead once you come out of the function. Right. But if you try to access those variables by using some address of operator or the dereferencing operator, then you will come across the concept of dangling pointers. So let me explain it with an example. I write my main function. And I take one integer pointer like this. Now I would like to call a function f u n 1 which has no parameters like this. I will fill up this particular program later. Uh, let me write the definition of the function f u n 1 no parameters and the return type of the function is integer pointer. So here you can see that f u n 1 is the name of the function which has no parameters that is it, it is accepting and the return type is the integer pointer. Now I would like to take a variable here int y and I would like to initialize it to some value 50. Now let me write a statement return of address of y. So here I'm going to return the address of y. When the compiler comes across this statement, you can see that the memory will be allocated for this y and 50 is stored here. Let me take the base address as 100 at this point. Now it is going to return the address of y. We know that the address of y is nothing but 100. When it is returning an address, the return type is integer pointer. So when it is returning an address, there should be some variable which is of type integer. Since you are returning the integer address, there should be an integer pointer there. So I would like to initialize it to P, where P is an integer pointer. So there's a matching. Here I'm returning the address of an integer variable and here I am catching that address inside an integer point. This is a perfect match. But what happens here is, let me end up this uh, program. I would like to print this value, this value of y using the pointer variable, that is the dereferencing point. So if you, go and execute this program, the compiler will come to check the main function here, okay, and here in the first statement, it will allocate the memory for p, let me take the base address as 100, and it is uninitialized, initial. Now here there is a function call here. Since function call is having the highest precedence than the assignment operator, the function call will be executed, therefore the control will jump from this point to this point, and it starts executing this function one body. And here we have this int y is equal to 50. Assume that 50 is stored inside this y and the base address is 100. Now I'm returning the base address of y. That is nothing but 100 is returned. When it is returning, you can see that this variable becomes dead. This variable becomes dead. and you are trying to store that dead variable address, that is deallocated variable address inside this pointer. And you are trying to print the value of this uh, P by using the dereference operator, which is a dangling pointer. So at this position, P becomes the dangling pointer. 
Why? Because at this position, P is pointing to an object which is already deallocated. So always remember that dangling pointers arise because the pointers are pointing to already deallocated variables or already deallocated objects. So a dangling pointer is a pointer which points to a already deallocated object. So how can we convert this dangling pointer into a normal pointer? So I don't want to make this P as a dangling pointer. Is there any situation that we can convert this dangling pointer into a normal pointer? Yes, there is a situation. The concept what you have to use here is I would like to maintain the life or the scope of this uh, y even after it comes out of the function, even after the control comes out of the function. So such type of variables are called as static variables. So instead of declaring this y as the automatic variables, I make use of a static keyword. I make use of the static variables that is static int y is equal to 50. So what happens at this position is even the control comes out of this particular function, the, the, the variable is still alive. So you are going to store the address inside here 100, therefore a link will be established between these two. And when you try to print it with star p, the 50 value will be printed. This is the output. So this is how the dangling pointer is going to be generated. We have seen three different uh, scenarios where we will come across the dangling pointers in C programming language. And coming to the last topic of what are the drawbacks or what happens if we have these dangling pointers. is the dangling pointers does not have that much of bad effect on the programming side. But there are some situations, assume that you are pointing a pointer to a location, to a memory location, let me say that my PTR is pointing to a memory where I have stored most of the operating system files, very confidential or the kernel part of the OS is pointed by this PTR. And while doing this, there may be situations where you may change the values of the operating system, which will ultimately lead you to the crashing of the program or the crashing of the system also. So the wrangling pointers may have some bad effect when you try to make use of, uh, when you try to modify the core part of the operating system using these pointers. So sometimes you may come across a program error like segmentation fault. So these segmentation faults, they arise because you have made use of a pointer which is pointing to a already deallocated object. So that is nothing but the dangling pointer. So when you come across this uh, segmentation fault, you can estimate that one error what you have done in the program is that you have left one of the pointer uh, pointing to a un deallocated memory, already deallocated memory. So this is all about the dangling pointer. Before wrapping up the concept, let me quickly recap what we have discussed in today's session. In today's session, we started our discussion on the introduction part to the dangling pointer. A dangling pointer is a most common bug which is related to the pointers and it is called as the wild pointer, it is also called as wild pointer 
and it occurs because sometimes the programmer fails to initialize the pointer with a valid address then that type of uninitialized pointers are known as the dangling pointers in C. If you want to specifically tell what a dangling pointer is, a dangling pointer is a pointer which is pointing to a location which is already deallocated. And then we have moved our discussion to when this dangling pointer will arise. We have seen three scenarios. The first scenario is uh, the dangling pointer may arise because uh, the pointer is pointing to uh, already freed memory. So here we have discussed the dynamic memory allocation and we have seen a program where we have initialized the memory with mlloc function and we have freed it by using the free function. After freeing the memory the pointer is left uninitialized. So that situation is one situation where we come across the dangling pointer. And in the second case or in the second scenario, variable goes out of scope. So we have seen the local variables and global variables. And then we have this main function. We have explained everything with a program. So we have taken a pointer and an x variable inside another block and when we come out of this block the x becomes dead variable and when you try to print the value of the value x by using the dereferencing of the pointer that is a scenario where you come across the dangling pointer and in the third scenario during function calls you may end up in the dangling pointers concept also so we have seen uh, a program example where I have taken a main function and another function and I call the function from the main and when I try to return the address of a local variable of the function 1 which I am trying to store it inside the P. Once the control comes out of the function the variables become dead. Why? Because they are local in nature. And you are trying to assign a, a function which is returning nothing and you are trying to store it inside a pointer. Therefore that pointer becomes a dangling pointer. This situation can be avoided. I told that this situation can be avoided by declaring a variable as a static variable. We know that the static variables have the capacity of uh, having their lifetime even during the function calls. It is initialized only once. Therefore that static variables can be retained during function calls. Therefore, in order to remove the dangling pointer concept, you can make use of the static variables also. And finally, we have seen what happens if we have the dangling pointers. Nothing much damage will happen, but there are some situations where the dangling pointers will ultimately lead to the crash of the program or crash, crash of the system. So when you come across the term segmentation fault, one point you can uh, bring it to your mind is that uh, you have made your program such that uh, at any point of the program, the you have used a pointer which is a dangling pointer. So that's all for today's session. Thank you one and all for joining the session.